Psalms chapter 100, a psalm of praise. You know, gives the idea what the psalm is for. <clears throat> what we've been talking about the last few psalms about the millennium. Make a joyful noise. It shows up, joyful noise, actually make a joyful noise seven times in your Bible, and they're all in Psalms. 66-1, 81-1, 95-1, 95-2, 98-verse-4, 98-6, and here 100-verse-1. Seven times of completeness are you told to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Not for, uh, not to the uh, assembly of people paid to come and hear you. Not for a bunch of people throwing a, a, a ball or discus or what have you. It's a joyful noise unto the Lord. It's a joyful noise, not just a noise. All ye lands. Oh, so that and it's not talking Israel. That's talking lands, plural. Everyone is to have their noise for the Lord, and not for some stupid assembly. And yet. There's a noise in the churches today, and it's not a joyful noise in the, in the ears of the Lord. It says in Revelation chapter 3, it makes them sick. It makes them vomit. Serve the Lord with gladness. Now, you want a counter part of that verse there. You want the opposite. Go read and study the life of the Jews in the wilderness. And you'll get what not gladness is. <laughs> you'll get griping and complaining. Gladness, happy. Come before his, God's presence, with singing. You don't sing when you're griping and complaining. You don't sing when you're, you're in misery. Joyfulness and gladness brings singing. Or being paid to sing. Anybody can get up on the stage and sing and be paid for it. And they don't have to be glad. They don't have to be joyful. They're just doing it to make a living. And again, you get a lot of this, this Christian contemporary music. They're doing it because they're being paid to do it. They're not doing it for the Lord. And most of those Christian contemporary music musicians are going to fall under what Matthew says. That Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we make all these albums? Yeah, you made all these albums, but you sung to another Jesus. Matter of fact, some of your songs wouldn't even have Jesus in it. But then we live holy hands. Yeah. A dog and pony show. That's what Herod wanted. Didn't you read there in, in the Gospel of John? That he wanted Jesus to do something. Well, guess what? That's what these singers of the Lord today, when they're not of the Lord, in these churches, I should say, they're putting a performance on. <clears throat> Know ye that the Lord, he is God. You want to stop ten people down Daytona Beach at random and see if they know the Lord, he is God? Would you like to stop at any given church and ask every ten person, if he knows the Lord, he is God, personally, as his Savior, outside of works, not of works, least any man boast. Would you like to ask any teenager who grew up in a church, in a Sunday school, if that person knows the Lord, he is God? When he walks out with a bag of candy, his face painted, and all the kinds of junk and games? Do you know the Lord? He is God. You can't call him Lord 
if you don't do what he says. He's not your Lord. And that goes back to verse 2. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. The queen of Sheba said that she marveled over Solomon because all his servants were happy. Are you like that in the Lord? It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Evolution is man-made. God is the creator. So you cannot know, know God if you don't believe in God as the creator. And even the Roman Catholic Church has, the last Pope John, whatever number he was, would come out and say that Genesis was a myth. And even some of the things, they are actually leaning to evolution. Well, Psalms 100 says you got to make a joyful noise to the Lord. you got to serve the Lord with gladness. you got to sing in his presence. And you got to know that he is God. Hebrews 11, 7 or 8 says you, you got to believe in God and know that's what faith is. And then you got to believe that he made us and we didn't make ourselves. That's a strong thing. Have you ever asked somebody when you're dealing about their soul, and I'm going to get this easy believism again, have you ever asked them if they believed in God before they bowed their head in prayer? Well, that would be a good question. <laughs> we had a couple JWs come to our door today. I didn't get the opportunity to talk to them, but... What if I said, okay, say this prayer and be saved? And they did and walked away. They don't believe Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. They would walk away unsaved. Thinking they're saved. There is prerequisites when it comes to God and us as saying we are his. There are people out there say, Lord, and they don't do what he says. They'll pray in church, Lord, but do you go to the world and preach the gospel? That's not an option. Rejoice evermore. That's serve the Lord with glass. Paul wrote that. We all don't do that verse. Give a man at least two hours at work or red lights. And now we'll see how much he rejoices. You see, that's where we come to failure. That's where we come to sin. Remember last night I said when we, when we in Psalm 99, if we exalt God all the time, we would be without sin. If we exalted God all the time in Psalms 99, Psalms 100, we'd be making a joyful noise to the Lord. We'd be singing to him. We'd be... Our whole life would be perfect and wonderful. But when we step God off the throne and put something else on the throne, whether it be a noun, person, place, or thing, then we lose Psalm 100. How do we lose Psalm 100? Well, if we go to a ball game, we start cheering on the, the players. We start yelling at the TV set. Like, that's going to do... Even I did that watching football. And you got to stand back in reality and say, you know what, that's just stupid. You watch a couple guys I've seen, and I'm not into boxing, but I've been where they had boxing on TV, and, and you get a bunch of guys and women in living to watch it, and they go completely crazy. It's like... They can't hear you. And then you got to wonder with television, when it comes to the to the Antichrist, how far is television going to develop? The 
God made us. The Bible is sure about one thing. In order to be saved, you got to believe there is a God. you got to believe that God created you. you got to believe that Jesus Christ was virgin born. We are his people. Well, that would be the Jews. But as a born again children, as, as a born again Christian, we are not his people. And I just hope a whole bunch of Baptists fell on the floor and had a heart attack. We are his sons. We are the children of God. We call him Abba Father. When we pray, you know, the Catholics say, Our Father who art in heaven. But that's not true. But when we call upon God in our prayer and say, Father, do you realize you have the right to call God Dad? And a month from now, or something like that, we are going to take a day, we're going to take a title that's given to God, and we're going to pass it to our dads. Now, if that ain't got Roman Catholic uh, roots in that, I don't know what does. Because the Bible says, call no man your father. That holiday in itself is a violation of Scripture. I've always called my dad, dad. And if there's respect that we should show our, our parents would be if it's in the public... Mr. Hayward, how I should dress my dad. My dad is not my father. My dad is lost and going to hell unless he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. How dare I call my dad a title given to God the Father? I'm sorry. I put a wet cloth on holidays because they're not Bible sound. We are the sons of God. Israel are his people. And we're going to see that this psalm is about the Jew and the sheep of his pasture. You go back to Psalms 23.1. You go to John chapter 10 and Jesus talks about I'm the shepherd. And he talks about the porter. And he talks about the sheep. There's one verse, I forget, I think it's in the teens or 20s. In John chapter, he says, other sheep we I have, and that's the church, that's the Gentiles in the church. But other than that, there is no place where you see Christians being called sheep. Now, Peter speaks about him as a shepherd over the flock. John speaks about uh, 99 sheep and one sheep that's lost, but where is the mystery? Where is all the Pauline doctrine when that was written, when Jesus spoke that? It wasn't to be known yet. Sheep in the Bible are pretty much 99% Jewish. His pasture, what's the pasture for the Jew? The land of Israel, the land that floweth with milk and honey. And as long as they do what God told them to do, the blessing that comes along, that would be a beautiful, great land of great resources and riches. And uh, I'm trying to think what the word would be, a supply from the ground. It is not today because they are not of God. They're not doing what God told them to do. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's into the cities and towns. They had gates. And into his courts with praise. That's into the, the temple. The temple had courts. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. In the city and in the temple. Verse 4 is no complaining.
There it is. Psalms 100 is a psalm of no complaining. No whining. Why? For the Lord is good. When you whine and complain, you, you take verse 5 and you nullify it. When you complain and gripe and, 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 and for the Lord is bad. Has to be. Why would you be griping and complaining? The Lord is not able to give us water. The Lord is not able to give us food in this desert. Is he able to provide us a table in this wilderness? Yea, has God said? And then Eve starts complaining. I can't touch it. Please don't touch it. He didn't say anything about touching it. He said, don't eat it. You could have eaten that fruit off that tree without touching it. Get yourself a ladder going. Oh. No. When we gripe and complain we, for the Lord is good, we, we make that a lie. But when we sing, we rejoice, and we honor God, then it, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy goes out into eternity. He said, how so? Because today for a born-again Christian, based upon what the, the finished work of Jesus Christ, we will never go into hell. We will never go into the lake of fire. Never. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. He that has the son has life. He that has not the son has no, not changed the thing, but there's, there's no mercy if you don't have the son. Faith will go away one day. When you see Jesus Christ, your faith is done. When you see New Jerusalem, your faith is done. Prophecy will end. What's there to prophecy prophesied in New Jerusalem? It's all happened. All the prophecies in the Bible have been fulfilled by Jesus Christ. They'll be done. But mercy and grace will ever be forevermore. That's why you're going to be singing praises in all what we're doing now to God in New Jerusalem. And his truth endureth to all generations. We celebrated three years ago the, the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. The truth goes on. The modern Bible is you got to keep up coming with a new one, keep coming up with a new one, keep coming up with a new one, keep coming up with a new one. And our Bible is really not 400 years old. Our Bible is a much older than 400 years old. It goes written all the way back to Job, the first book chronicle in order when you take the King James Bible you say it's the Word of God it is the Word of God from Job it's a lot older 400 years old how many generations from Job when Elihu wrote Job to today when we had the finished work that we can buy in Walmart how many generations is that? How many generations does it record from a Abraham to the Messiah being born? Go look at Luke chapter uh, 3 and look at Matthew chapter 1. That's a lot of generations. In fact, I think Matthew tells you. I think it's three places. From this, from the David to... It's, it's, I don't know, let me see if I can find that real quick. This is in Matthew, chapter 1. I believe it says generations. It's over here. Yeah, it says in 17. So all the generations, so look at that. You can take Matthew 1, 17, go right back to Psalm 100, verse 5, because this is the truth. All the generations from Abraham to David 
are 14 generations. And from David into the carrying away to Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away to Babylon unto Christ, 14 generations. That's a lot of generations. And that's just from David. That's not from Abraham. That's not from Adam. And in Mary's genealogy, you can trace Jesus Christ all the way back to Adam, which is the Father God. <laughs> you know, when Satan speaks, yea, as God said, that was the truth. When Eve changed the Bible in Genesis 3, that was the truth. That's exactly what she did. It's been the truth all the way through. Listen, Scientists and these space rocketers and go find water on Mars, go find life out in the universe, can't take the truth of Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created. Now, don't you dare tell me that any person down there in that space agency is a born-again Christian. And they send those rockets out there looking for life. They send, they send those rockets out there and those probes to find the beginning of the universe because we just read it. You have to acknowledge God is the creator, not man. Nowhere down there in that space agency when they do all that stuff to prove evolution, are they a Christian? You wouldn't be doing it. You would take a stand and say, hey, stop spending the taxpayers' money. Right here, Genesis 1 is the answer. And shut the whole thing down. I guess the love of money is the root of all evil. And some have erred. I have two people in my life that I question if they say they're a Christian. People who try to find evolution as proof. I doubt you. I don't know. I, I don't know your heart, but I doubt you. Number two, Bible correctors. I don't know what would give a man the idea to tell God we know how things came. We weren't even there. Or this is God's word. I can change it. I can correct it. I can tell you what God really said. I, those, those are two worst sets of people in my life besides uh, the Roman Catholic Church. There are three groups of people. I just really... Evolutionists. The Roman Catholic Church. And people who correct the Bible. Those people I call the question. But if we exalt God in Psalm 99, Psalm 100 would be a blessing, would be joyfulness. And maybe the problem is if you ain't got joy in your life, if you're not happy, your Psalm 99 is wrong. You're exalting something more than God. You see how the Bible's laid out? You don't exalt God, you're not going to be happy. Go in there. Still tells us daily that God is not alive and 
salvation's plan is just a fairy tale. But their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you. And the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops. 